we'll now talk about uh, put options. A put option is the right to sell. So let me give you a very simple example. Here is just the definition first. A put option is an option to sell a specified number of shares of a security within some future period. So again, this is a contract. So it's a piece of paper. And your asset can be shares of, say, General Electric. Again, you have a strike price of, say, 25. And you have a maturity date of, say, 30th June. Now, the long party has what right in a put option? The right to sell this underlying for a price of 25. Okay, so now what makes this price valuable? Let's say that at time zero, you buy this option for $3. It's a put option. Generally, put options are denoted by the symbol P. So you pay $3 to buy this put option. Now, do you have the stock or do you have a piece of paper or the contract that says that you have the right to buy? You have the piece of paper. Okay. Now, this piece of paper gives you the right to buy the underlying for 25. I'm sorry, to sell the underlying for 25 on this date. What are you hoping for? Yeah, you are hoping that the price will go down. Why? Because if the market price of GE on this day is 20, then you have the right to sell for 25. So what's your payoff or how much money will you make? Five. Five. What if the underlying on maturity is 30? Then you will you make a loss or will you just not exercise the option? Yeah. You will not exercise the option because... There is no point. If you really want to, uh, so you're, you have a right to sell for 25. And if the market price is now 30, you don't need to sell based on this contract. You can just go to the market and sell for 30. So a put option is in the money. If the price in the market on expiry date is lower than the strike price. That's when a put option is useful. And I'm just giving an example of a European option because they are easier to talk about. Now, what if, given that you spent $3 on this put option, what if the price at maturity is 24 What will you do, Anusha? You understand the picture here? How much should you pay for the put option? You, you paid $3 for this piece of paper. Let's say I am the counterparty. So what does the piece of paper give you the... Right to sell. At what price? Yeah, you have the right to sell the underlying at 25 You would sell? You would... Uh, so you would sell at what price? Okay. Exactly. Okay, do you agree? Exactly. So you should exercise because if you are... Uh, if you do what... Uh, what ISA does, what's your overall loss? Three dollars. If you do what her neighbors do, then what's the loss? What's better, a loss of three or a loss of two? So you minimize your losses by exercising the option. Okay. And she thought she was a smart one among you. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, so that is the, so, Okay, now, now I can take a question. Okay, let's do one thing at a time. Okay, so the question is, what's the other party? The other party here is, the, is called the short. Okay, let's say I'm the other party. You are the party that is long, and I'm the party that is short. What's in it for me? Why would I do this? Yeah, if I, so I pocket my three bucks right up front, right? And then I hope and pray that the price goes up. It becomes, let's say if the initial, initially the price was 25, I expect the price to either remain at 25 or go up. Even if the price comes down to 24, I'd still be happy. Okay, so my view or my perspective is that the price will either stay roughly the same or go up. What is your view when you invest in a put option? It will go down. So three bucks I get right up front. 
and then after that whatever profit I make is based on what happens to the price. What's the, what's the maximum profit, profit that I can make? Yeah, I am short. What's the maximum profit that I can make? Yeah, the maximum I can make is three. Why? Because if the option expires in the money, then what happens to my profits? If the option expires at 24, the price is at 24, is the option in the money or out of the money? It's in the money, then what's my profit? Two. Because I got three initially and then and then at payoff I lose one. What if the what's the break even point? The break even is twenty two. Why? Because at twenty two what's what's the payoff? The payoff is is uh, no. What's the payoff? Payoff is the exercise value. Let me actually do this for you. Something that is not explicitly covered in the book, but something really fundamental to this and those who might be doing the CFA exam at some point will find this extremely useful. Okay, so payoff diagrams and profit and loss, which we have talked about and generally with options, this is a core concept that you need to study. So we'll do this for a put option first. When you talk about a payoff diagram or an exercise value, we sort of did this with the call option. You have the stock price on the x-axis and the payoff amount on the y-axis. So that's the payoff. How do you draw this? Let's take the long party first. And let's say the strike price is 25. What is the payoff for the long? If the stock price is at 25 at maturity, given that you have exercise price is 25. If at maturity the stock price is 25, <coughs> then what is the payoff, Abu Turab? What's the payoff if the stock price is equal to 25 at maturity? The payoff is zero. What if the stock price is 26? It's going to be zero. So the payoff will be zero if the stock price ends up being 25 or more. Okay, what if the stock price is 24? What are we talking about? We are talking about a put option. Okay, and with a put option, when is a put option? Remember, in my example, you hold the put option. So you have this contract that gives you the right to sell at 25. If the stock price at maturity is 26, will you exercise the right to sell for 25? Or can you just sell in the market for, you will not exercise the option, so the option is worthless. The payoff, so you will not do anything with the option. You will just let it expire out of the money. Right, so for a put option, if the stock price is greater than X, then it's out of the money. What's the payoff for a out of the money option? Zero. Yeah, so for a put option, the payoff is zero if the stock price ends up being greater than strike price. By payoff, I mean, let's say that you are long on this piece of paper. So you have the right to sell. So this is a put. So you have the right to sell this to me, This uh, uh, the underlying asset. Let's say underlying asset is shares of General Electric. You have the right to sell shares of General Electric to me for 25 if the stock price at maturity is 24, then the payoff at maturity is 1 because you essentially at maturity day can buy the stock for 24 and sell it to me for 25. So by having this option, you essentially make $1. You can make a profit. Yeah, the short no, uh, one second, this is just at maturity. Forget about what happened initially. I'm just talking about payoffs. Payoff, when I say payoff, we ignore the initial amount that was paid for this piece of paper. So payoff just means at maturity, who gets how much. The long, which is what we are talking about now, at maturity will get net net $1. If you have the right to sell to me for 25 and the market price is 24 then the net benefit to you is one dollar. What if the market price is 20? Then what's the payoff? Five. How can you make your maximum payoff, Azza? When the stock price is what? 
when the stock, if the stock price were to go down to zero, then what's the payoff? 25. Then the payoff is 25. So this is the payoff for the long party. Once I will, but one thing at a time. So for the payoff, you do not consider the three dollars that were invested. Okay, now what is the payoff for the short? So this is a payoff for a long put. What is the payoff for a short put? So if the price ends up being more than 25, does the short put have to pay anything? No, the short put does not have to pay anything. What if the price ends up being 24? Hey, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 24. Then does the short put need to pay something? Yes. What? Yeah, so that's minus one. He needs to pay one, so the payoff is minus one. Okay, so the short put is simply a mirror image of the long put. Okay, remember in class 8 or 9, you studied reflections and rotations and all that? Okay, I have a daughter in class 6 who is learning the stuff without any clue as to how it will be useful to her. Okay, but now, 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 now you know that you studied this some time ago. And this is one of the uses. Okay, so the short is always going to be a mirror image of the long, the mirror image being an image around the x axis. Okay, now these are the payoffs that ignore $3. They treat $3 as the sunk cost. And any notice that this ties back to the concept of sunk cost. Is the decision to exercise or not exercise influenced by the amount that you paid for the option no because if it's in the money you are going to exercise no matter whether you paid three dollars one dollar whatever you paid but if your boss asks you what is the overall profit that you made do you think the profit if you are calculating profits will this three dollars kick in yeah. yeah then it will kick in so let's do profits in blue okay now what if uh, so take the the long put the blue is for profit what is the profit if the for you if the stock price is at 25 at maturity then the profit is negative three what if the price ends up being more than 25 the profit is zero or the profit is minus three minus three what if the stock price ends up at 24? Then, then your profit is negative 2. What's the break-even point? So at 22, you break even. right? What's your maximum possible profit that you can make? 22. If the stock price goes to 0, then your profit is $22. Okay. So what does this blue line represent? This is your profit for the long at maturity. Now, what's the profit for the short? Mirror image till some point or always the mirror image? What do you think? What's the, what's the profit for the long if the stock price is very high? 25 or higher? It's the $3. You start out right and then... Okay, so, so what if the stock price is 22? Then this also breaks even? Right. What about if the stock price is less than 22? Then he starts seeing a loss. Right. So it is always the short will always be a mirror image of the long because with options we have a zero sum gain. What the long gains? Where is that gain coming from? It's coming from the short. Money doesn't pop out of nowhere. If you are getting money, somebody needs to give it to you. That someone is the short. Okay. So. This is the payoff diagram for a, well, if I, if I, and we are going to see this in more detail later, the benefits of this, but the short believes that the stock price is stable or going up. So if you are convinced that a given stock is not going down because you believe the company is doing very well, then you might make a quick buck by selling a put option. Okay. In any case, uh, so now what I want you to do is draw a picture, similar picture for call options. 
And this is a high probability question, even though the curriculum, your, your um, textbook doesn't do this in detail, but this is a very fundamental point. So I want you to um, learn this stuff. This will be on your quiz in addition to book questions. So make sure you're on top of this. Do the same payoff diagram for the long, short, and profit diagram for the long, short. All right. So, okay, now pay attention. We are going to just put a the picture for a call option now. <coughs> I'll again do the the payoff in red and the profit in blue. And when you see how simple this is, you will probably feel like kicking yourself. What's the x-axis? X-axis is the stock price and the y-axis in red will be the payoff and in blue will be the profit. And I told you that x is equal to 25. So what what is a call option? the right to buy. When is a call option useful? When the stock price is high or when the stock price is low? High. So what if the stock price ends up being 26? What's the payoff on the call? One. So if this is 25, if the stock price ends up being 26, the payoff for the long is one. What if the stock price is 27? Then it is two. And do I need to do more or can you, do you get the drift here? What's the drift? Okay, so as, as the stock price keeps going up, the payoff keeps going up. What if the stock ends up being 24? What's the payoff? Zero. Negative one or zero? zero? Will you exercise the option? No. You will not. So the excess option, if the stock price is less than strike price, the option is out of the money. Any sensible person will not exercise the option. No point selling something. Uh, so anyway, it's the right to buy. No point uh, buying for 25 when you can buy in the market for 24. So do you see this now? If the stock price is anywhere from 0 to 25, the option expires out of the money, so it's worthless. So what is this? How should I label this? Long call. What about the short call? The short call is a mirror image. The short is always a mirror image of the long. So this is a short call. Everybody with me? Yes. Okay, now, now should I do the profit also? Yes. Are you now smart enough to do the profit? No, I want you to do it. Try. Okay, so this is, this is what the profit looks like. So the profit is in blue. For the, for the long call, what is the profit if the stock ends up being 25? How much? He paid, he paid dollars three for that call option. For the long. So the call will be minus three. What if the stock ends up being at any number below 25? So the profit is minus three. After that, if the stock ends up being 26 minus 2, so actually I should make 26 over there, so then it's minus 2. So essentially it's like this. What's the break-even point? The break-even is 28 because if the stock is at 28, the payoff 3 is just enough to compensate the, compensate what? The $3 that he paid initially. So this is the profit for the long call. What about the profit for the short call? That's simply a mirror image of this. What's the short call hoping? Yeah, the short call is hoping that the stock price goes down or stays the same. Okay, so now all this material is critical. It's your, uh, it's going to show up on a quiz in addition to the other questions. Okay, so let's keep going. What is, uh, so all the rest of the stuff is fairly obvious. Now we are just going over the mechanics of the put options. Expiration date, you're all clear on. What exercise value, just read what this says. It is the value of an option if it were exercised. What am I, uh, the other term for this is also the payoff. If you are to exercise an option, for a put option, what's the payoff? It's the stock price minus the, minus the strike price. Okay, now read this and I'll ask you some questions. Okay, so what are you here, long or short? 
you you are long so what are you hoping for you are hoping that the price goes down so that's how you make money can you uh, uh, draw a payoff diagram and a profit diagram for your situation here three okay so this is this is what this looks like so for the long if this is the stock price i'll do the payoff as usual in red so this is your your payoff will be this what's this point and what's the profit the profit will be above this or below this so you're below by 3 so that's the profit okay so fairly straightforward or right, you this is all obvious you are the buyer of the option why would you buy this option because you think the stock price will go down strike price is given what is the exercise value if the stock fell to 45 that's fine you've done all this all right